Welcome to SF Jobs Lab. We bring you all possible solution of interview question, including most efficient one. And in today's question, uh, we need to design a stack uh, that supports all standard stack cooperation like push, pop, and is empty. And along with this, uh, it has to support one new operation uh, called get min, uh, which will return the minimum element of the stack whenever we uh, call it. And uh, remember, this all operations should be done in constant time. And we have one more condition here is that apart from stack, we are not allowed to use any other data structures like array, trees, etc. Let's understand the problem uh, with the example now. So let's assume if we have uh, pushed these elements into our uh, stack and that is our uh, top element of that stack, then when we call get mean here, then it should return one, right? Just because one is the minimum element of this stack now. And let's assume uh, if we have done pop operation three times and in stack we'll leave with uh, these elements where nine will be the top element of the stack if we call get min method then it should return three right just because three is the minimum element among these stack elements and now let's say if you are adding uh, two more elements let's say if you are adding uh, 13 and 11 then 11 is our top element and in this case calling get min will return three again and now let's approach the solution with very basic thinking that uh, is it possible to solve this problem uh, with one single variable which will be holding a minimum value so assume this is your standard stack and we have one variable called min well and now let's say um, uh, we are getting element one by one and we are doing this operation getting start with the push operation where we are pushing eight as we don't have any element in our standard stack we'll push eight here directly and obviously we will initialize this variable with starting value which is eight and now let's say next element is coming five we have to just push this five and now our top element will be five and what we'll do here, uh, we will be uh, comparing uh, 5 with the value which is stored in the min well. Overwrite the value uh, when we have element value lesser than the stored value. Uh, right now, stored value is 8, which is greater than 5. So, definitely we have to overwrite 8 with a 5. And now, again, we are doing push operation where we have to push element 3. So, we'll push 3 in the stack, and now top will be 3. And again, we need to compare uh, 3 with a 5. So definitely 3 is lesser than uh, 5. So we need to overwrite 5 with a 3 here. So like that, we are doing push operation 4 time mode where we are inserting element 9, 1, 10, and then 7, where 7 will be top element. And at the end, min well will have value 1. And at this stage, if we call our get min method, then we will be looking into the min well value or whatever the value we have in this we will simply return that so in this case we will return one right which is true so as long as we are doing only push operation till then we will not have any problem why just because so while doing a push operation we are comparing our element with the min element every time and just because of that scanning process we are able to maintain minimum of all the elements which are there in the stack in other words, if I say we are allowed to do only push operation, then this solution is correct. We can solve the problem uh, with only one variable, right? But as is already given that we have to do all this uh, standard operation, which is a push pop, right? So now let's see uh, how this pop operation can destroy uh, this logic over here. Now let's assume after this, you know, we are doing three pop operation one by one, okay? So after executing pop operation three times, our stack will have this many elements where nine will be the top element. So one thing we have to see that okay, while doing a pop operation, can we update this min value with the previous minimum value? And the answer is no, uh, absolutely not just because we do not have any idea about, you know, the history of minimum element value, right? And because of that, now what will happen? Our this variable will have only value one all the time. If you call get min now at this condition, then it's supposed to give us value 3. But just because of we have 1 stored in min well, it will be returning 1, which is incorrect, right? So that implies that solving this problem with one variable, we cannot achieve. That's also indicate that we have to store, you know, the history of minimum element value somewhere using some data structures. 
and if you go back and see the question then it uh, they already have mentioned that we are not allowed to use any extra data structures for like array uh, structure trees right so after applying all these conditions uh, what i can say that okay we are left with uh, one thing that we can use uh, you know another stack to store a minimum element value so as far as now that is pretty much clear that we have to store the history of minimum element and for that we have to use another stack right and now as we have to have uh, another stack uh, to maintain the minimum value and definitely we need to do a push and pop operation uh, as well uh, so let's quickly see that what are the rules for uh, a push and uh, pop operation let's call that uh, auxiliary stack as main stack so um, for push operation definitely uh, first we'll be looking into uh, whether that main stack uh, is overflow or not if not then we'll be checking this condition where uh, first we'll check uh, whether this stack is empty or not if it is empty then definitely we are going to push uh, the element whatever the element we are about to push to standard stack or else if element value x uh, is lesser than or equal to a top of a min stack then in that case also we are going to push that element to the min stack and here uh, this equal sign will be handling the situation where we have a duplicates element in the sequence and then after simply we have to uh, increment our top of uh, min stack right and now let's see the uh, rules of pop operations and in that definitely we have to first check whether min stack is empty or not if it is empty there is no point of you know doing any pop operation we cannot do basically and if it is not empty then we will be comparing whatever the element we are popping up from uh, standard stack that element value we need to compare with the top of min stack if both elements value are the same then we need to pop from min stack as well and after that simply we have to decrement uh, our the top of uh, min stack right and now let's quickly see this process with the same operation uh, which we have done in our last example before that let me create two stack one is min stack and this is our standard stack so we're starting with the push operation so we are pushing 8 first then in the standard we have to just simply push here and now this will be our top and in min stack also uh, we need to push this right as it is and this will be our top after that again we are doing a push 5 then 5 will be coming here on top of 8 and now top is pointing to 5 now let's see whether we have to push 5 into this min stack or not so for that we'll check the condition so 5 is lesser than top of min stack right so yes we need to push 5 into this min stack as well and then top of min stack also will be pointing to 5 and if at this point of time if you call get min function then it will be returning top of min stack which will be 5 so this is also correct right as of now let's go ahead and now i will push three so this is very simple we will push three on top of five and then we'll update our top uh, again we will be comparing three with top of min stack which is five so three is lesser than five that means we need to push three as well in min stack and then we'll update top here and now let's execute another push operation where we are pushing nine so we'll push nine uh, into our standard stack but we'll not push nine on top of min stack why just because the condition uh, 9 is lesser than or equal to top of min stack is uh, that condition is not getting satisfied okay and after this if we call get min operation then again we will return top element of min stack which is 3 here so this is also correct just because 3 is minimum among 9 3 5 8 and now let's push 1 and we'll push 1 in both stack and again if you are willing to get min at this stage then definitely it will return one just because one is a top of min stack and now let's start popping up the element right so let's pop which means one will get removed from top of standard stack and now nine will be the top element and now let's see uh, whether we have to remove the top element from the min stack or not so the element which we are popping up was one and the top element of min stack is also one so if you see this condition right so this condition is getting satisfied that means we have to pop the element from min stack as well that means now 3 will be our top element of min stack and at this point of time if you call get min again then it should return the top element of min stack which is 3 so is this correct yes 
3 is the minimum among these elements. And now let's execute pop again. That means 9 will get moved out from standard stack, but the top element of min stack, which is 3, that will not get moved just because this condition will not get satisfied, right? 9 is not equal to 3. And finally, let's call get min again, which will return 3, top of min stack, and this is correct. So, uh, like that, uh, we can solve this problem. And remember this that min stack uh, we are using only for get min operation and other standard operation like push pop is empty is full uh, we have to use the standard stack now can you think of optimizing the solution in a way such that we can completely get rid of using auxiliary stack well we can do that if we are allowed to change the structure of standard stack the structure of standard stack object will have only one element where we will be storing values and if we can add one more element here which will be storing the minimum of the stack along with the value then what we have to do is very simple so this is the object as uh, which is going into the stack and before we push this object into uh, stack we'll assign x uh, to value and this x we are getting from this expression right so this is x before assigning a min val we'll check uh, if stack is empty or not if it is empty then the min value of this object will be x itself or else min of object s will be minimum of x and top min where top is the top element of the stack and min is the aggregator function which will be returning minimum value so let's see this uh, with the example so this is our stack so let's begin with push and we are doing push 8 so as we have a two field so 8 will be assigned to value and min also will have value 8 just because initially um, it is empty so min also will be having a value x right and now we will push 5 so in this case value will be 5 and this was a top so min will be the minimum of 5 and 8 so minimum of 5 and 8 is 5 so 5 will be here and that will be top now after this we are doing a push operation again so this time we are pushing 3 so value will be 3 no doubt and min will be minimum of 3 and 5 so minimum of 3 and 5 is 3 and now we are pushing 9 so here it will be 9 and minimum of 9 and 3 is 3 so here we have a 3 now we push 1 so it will be 1 and minimum 1 and 3 is 1 so 1 will be here and when we execute get min operation so in this case we have to return dot dot min okay so here it will return one and if we do a pop now so pop will remove the top element and after that top will be pointing to nine comma three at this particular time if you will execute get min then we will get top dot min which is three now so like that we can execute all the operation in constant time but make sure in this case we are allowed to change uh, the structure of the standard stack so i hope you like uh, our effort and if you like it so please subscribe our channel thanks again and see you in next video